Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday uh, in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker, and today's show is dedicated to fitness and nutrition. And I couldn't think of anyone better to help me out than the founder of the fitness brand, Oxford, Alex Oxford. Alex believes fitness is for all of us, no matter what your current fitness level or experience is. I first became aware of Alex in a video he did uh, went viral in 2014. You might recognize this video that I'm about to play. Alex is giving off uh, free hugs in Trafalgar Square in the United Kingdom. And he joins us live from the UK this morning to share fitness and nutrition tips and then put me through my paces in a short workout. And I hope anyone watching will join us as well. So let's say good morning to Alex. Hey, good morning, good Alex. <laughs> good morning to you guys. And uh, it's 2 p.m. here in UK, but it's amazing to say good morning to everyone watching. <laughs> That's correct. I mean, people could be watching in the UK, your Croc Fit people. Yeah. Um, I should ask, did you already have a workout this morning? I've gone for a long walk, but I haven't actually done my training session yet, but I probably will straight after this. In fact, I'm really looking forward to our little training session. It's just going to be 10, 15 minutes. Um, I think we're going to work our core. Let's do some ab work oh, where we can just sit down. Um, so I'm looking forward to that session. I love that. Um, that video was certainly done at a different time in our lives. Yeah, well, <laughs> totally. <laughs> at, the beginning, at the beginning of lockdown, I um, when people were needing some love and positivity, I put it out there and said, what does anybody think about doing um, free hugs part two when we're allowed to touch each other again. But will it will it ever happen to that level? I hope so. Um, I hope people so. would love it. Yeah, yeah, I don't really know. What prompted that video? Well, that really was quite lucky. That was like you said, 2014. At that stage of my career, I was um, not, not much had happened in regards to social media for me. I wasn't known whatsoever. I... I had no risk in doing something like that. And it was my friend's idea. He creates videos. He said, I've got a great idea. Let's go do this. Um, and I thought, yeah, I mean, why not? I want to spread the positivity. I want to make cool videos like this. And we posted it and not much happened for a while, but it just gained momentum, got shared so many times, became viral. And like you said, so many people now um, are introduced to me as knowing about that video, which is incredible. And I like to reshare it and put it out there because it makes people smile um, and feel positive. It, it's so true. And I don't know, uh, uh, for me, I, I saw the video. I don't know if it is what, if that's like how my path to finding your fitness stuff is, is how, but for a lot of people, it probably is by just doing some research. Um, it's sad because we could really use that right now too. Even yeah, allowed. We could use that kind of positivity. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I shared it. I think sharing the video and sharing the photo is good to spread that positivity um, through the lockdown and coronavirus, and then the Black Lives Matter um, protests and all of that. It was it was the kind of positivity that everybody needs right now. So hopefully, I get to do it again. It's true. Well, let's go back in time. Uh, what were you like as a child? Was fitness something you've always been interested in? Um, yeah, totally. I was a very um, sporty kid. I was always into um, mainly football and basketball when I was a child, playing in clubs and things like that. And my parents were great with always helping me stay active. And that just naturally progressed into um, my passion for fitness by the time that I got to college and um, university and, and things like that. Um, and I moved away from the sports and into the gym and how to build muscle and how to be fit and strong for the sports I was playing. So it originated with quite an internal motivation, like for me. But later on, I realized, actually, this feels fantastic. I love it. I think I want my career to be in helping others achieve that at the same time. And then that progressed. And when you say football, do you mean soccer? Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. I just needed to, to re <laughs> reconfirm that for sure. <laughs> um, what And did you study, you studied fitness in university, correct? Yep. I went to a university called Southampton, which is right at the south coast of England. 
and studied fitness and personal training for three years. And by the time that I reached my third year, I went straight into working as a full-time personal trainer in a, a chain, a popular chain gym here in the UK. And I progressed up the ladder and became a, a fully booked PT. But I knew at that stage that I had um, bigger passions. I had goals in my mind that I couldn't always tangibly put my finger on, but I knew there was something more than personal training, which I loved, but I wanted to reach more. I went down the route of fitness modeling first because social media was still kind of small but growing, but I was starting to use Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube. Um, but I became a fitness model, got a few jobs. I always wanted to be on the front cover of these magazines. I'm not in my office now, but you might have seen, I, I have a few framed uh, magazines, which I'm incredibly proud of. Um, and that transitioned gradually into building my own brand, my own business and ethos and method called CrocFit and, and then created this community on social media and, and people that are using my workout programs and following my methods um, around the world. And gradually, I let go of the one-to-one -one personal training so I could continue creating content, fitness content on social media to reach more and more people. So the fitness modeling, what was, do you remember the first one you, you did? Yes. Um, just like, um, just like whenever you get any opportunity, like I got my first spot at a modeling agency in London, but it was probably the most popular sports agency at the time. And I got, I got my, my photos, my interview, got the spot and I was like, wow, I'm going to be the biggest model in the world just give me a week and it'll be there and you know just like most things nothing happens it takes a long time um castings 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 um you know the drill um and it was i think four months later so not bad but not what i'd hoped for four months later i got a job it was a running job it was a great it was a perfect start nothing um too scary completely natural for a sportswear brand where i wore trainers and went to um a, like a forest yeah like a, a trail run and it was just i was scared very nervous but i thought this is me just running and being paid for it to take photos um but what really was a magical moment probably about a year after that i'd done a few more jobs i traveled for work and i went to Mallorca, the spanish island um in the sun for another running job and i just remember thinking I finished that job and I sat in the hotel by the pool and I was like, this is what I dreamed of for so long. And it was a, it was a real memorable moment. I always remember that moment thinking I first thought these things were impossible for me. Um, and here I am achieving them. And I used that manifestation and positivity in my mind to then create so many more things in my career. Well, and I think you helped so many people by sharing that positivity and by sharing your plans. Speaking of your plans, I'm using Home Fit One. I'm in week seven um, on workout 34, but it's my second time because I did have a personal injury from, you know, just I'm a little older, so the body wasn't used to that. But uh, I, I find the plans so easy, especially when I uh, found CrocFit, um, you were still doing it with the PDFs sending the PDFs out. And that was a, just honestly a little more difficult, but now you've created this amazing app, which makes it impossible to not do your workout. <laughs> so talk about the different plans and how, how you actually created them. But I mean, because, you know, I mean, they're, yeah. I, I'm seeing results, but I mean, you know, I'm sweating my butt off, I'm working hard. Um, yeah. And I know your goal is to like burn fat. So talk about all of that. Yeah, my whole idea with CrocFit is to help everyone from somebody who's never done anything, who's sitting on the sofa and wants to get started, all the way up to somebody who sees themselves as quite advanced and might have been in the gym or working out for 10 years. Something for everyone in that massive um, range. Um, but also not only to get quick, fast, strong results, but to really create the healthy habits that enables us to stay fit and healthy forever because what's a 12-week plan if you do 12 weeks and then you go back to your old habits at the end 
And that's why I'll continue to create this CrocFit One Year program, which really hopes to create the healthy habits so people can maintain their results forever. So when it came to creating the programs, yes, they're hard, they're tough workouts, they're gonna push you, but at the same time, they're a way to become a part of your lifestyle. So you can be sociable, so you can eat the foods you enjoy, and so you can just make it a part of your life because then you're gonna make it long-term. I started with creating what is now called the Gym Fit programs for gym training because when I got my first magazine cover, uh, that gave me the motivation to create this brand and online plan called CrocFit. So I just basically put my training program that I was doing for that magazine cover into a PDF. That then progressed into, oh, let's create a home training program, body weight, no equipment, so that anybody can get started. And, and that's through, the part yeah. that, that it's body weight and then that each individual workout is roughly no more than 30 minutes with the, right? I mean... Absolutely, 20 to 30 minutes max. And I, I, what I, the reason for that is yes, you can make hard, intense, 45, 50 minute or hour long workouts. But the thing is to get people engaged and to get people doing it without thinking fitness is a burden, it's nice to just do those short workouts because what happens when the sweat starts pouring and you feel good is like, you know what? I feel like doing something else. I'm gonna go for a run. I'm gonna do this little 10 minute abs workout or something else and that triggers a positive response. So I find that that's a really good way to go. Um, and the home fit plan, like you said, you're doing um, has been the most popular um, thing right now during this time, of course, and I've really put it out there. I've made it 99p and I've given all proceeds to different charities for the past three months. So I'm basically oh, wow. giving it away. Um, but unfortunately, that ends in two days. I've, I've done it for three months and that offer ends in two days. So if you're watching this live, then you're in luck. <laughs> and um, you have it for, for men and women. So it's there's a male gym fit, right? I mean, a home fit for men, home fit for women as well. No, home fit is for both. Oh, okay. And then, and then gym fit and she fit are the male and female gym programs. Gym programs. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, talk about creating the app and and the um, the detail that you put into that. I mean, because the other thing that was um, difficult for me with the PDF, because I do like you know to make sure I'm doing it correctly, was there wasn't a video at that time for everything. Now there's a mm -hmm. video for every single workout, which is amazing. Yes, the problem with the PDFs is, well, as you can imagine, and as you know, is yes, you can have it on your screen and click the link to watch the video, that's not convenient. And a new PDF was the start and the way to go to create this, but there's a thousand other fitness trainers doing the same thing. And because of the lack of convenience, it's very easy for people to fall off and make excuses. Yeah. So to make, I knew that it was gonna be a big investment and time and money for me to create this app. But I knew if I wanted the business to be a success as well as get the most out of people that are using CrocFit, it had to be user-friendly, convenient, and really enjoyable. The gamification process, um, I wanted all of those things. It had to be convenient, user-friendly, easy to use, and gamified because then fitness can be a little bit addictive in a good way. Like, oh, I'm really looking forward to getting that next blue check mark to feel like I've got that sense of achievement. So it took a, probably from start to finish, it was a year um, from starting the project to launching the project, um, launched 2019 January, started in 2018 January. Um, lots of mess, lots of stress, lots of struggle. Um, for anybody that's worked in software development and technical things, it is a nightmare, but um, it's, a, it's a journey. And what I'm most happy about and grateful about is my community, you guys who have been there the whole time, because none of it would be happening without you. And also that during the steps of the app, when things aren't working or something bad happens, which is all the time, um, my community and my users are always just so understanding and are just there for the journey. Well, that's the other thing that's amazing is, um, especially when I started this, I was, um, it was before I had hip replacements. I had both my hips replaced about two years ago. And 
I was nervous about probably some of the exercises and I emailed and you answer and, and you do that for everybody. How do you keep up with all of that? I mean. Yes, um, I remember your first email. I do, I remember. And I, I do my best to remember everyone and their history. <laughs> it's hard. However, I knew full well, another reason why people fall off of their fitness program is through lack of support and lack of accountability and the lack of, I've got nobody to ask that question. So I'm just, and then naturally your motivation decreases. When you feel like you've got someone to talk to, unlimited amount, the motivation goes sky high and you feel supported on the journey. I knew that I had to do that. And at the start of doing CrocFit, I knew that I just had 10 or 20,000 followers, which of course is a lot, but I knew that my goals were to have a massive following. So I'm thinking, how can I still answer back to everyone when I have a large following? So I've done well. It's ta it takes up a portion of my work and my job is to respond to emails and DMs. But I, I know what an important job that is, is for me. I want developments in the app to have like a community feed, like a Facebook feed mm. and an instant chat. So this will decrease my one-to-one -one time where people can talk together, ans ask and answer questions for each other, really? and I'll and I'll be there to to pitch in when required. So then some time from me is decreased. The one-to-one -one email will always be there, but this will be a good way to bring the community together. It's a really smart ad. So speaking of the CrocFit community, here I am in the United States. You're in the UK. How, how many countries? Do you have any idea that you're helping people in? Well, yes, dozens, a lot a lot of countries. Most most popular is UK, US, uh, Canada, Australia, and some Euro European countries as well. Of course, it's mostly the English-speaking countries, um, but it usually represents the following that I have, because obviously they're the ones that I'm able to communicate with most, which are mainly UK and US. Mainly UK and US. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. For the, for the <laughs> yeah. um, so if you had to give someone like, you know, five top fitness tips, what would they, what would they be? Well, it's, um, I'm all about right now is, is the consistency long-term, like we just spoke about a minute ago. And something that I'm experimenting with quite a lot at the moment is, is, not going a hundred percent in every workout and we've been through trends in the fitness industry about smashing your body the hit training the hard workouts which of course is needed sometimes however it's harder to it's harder to recover the injury risk is high and if you're sore the next day you might not train and your overall volume of training is decreased so my number one tip right now is to do something every day that is 60 70 percent whatever that is Tr don't always do that last rep don't always go to failure go to failure maybe one out of ten times or one out of ten days think about an elite athlete how many times a year do they peak how many times a year do they reach their one rm or one repetition maximum it's once or twice a year the other days they're training and they're just cycling through the motion and pushing those barriers just uh, a tiny bit each day. And I think we should all try to be our own athlete with that training mindset. Because so what's so common for people is, oh crap, I've taken a month off. I'm, so you're super motivated, you smash your workouts, you don't eat enough because you're on a diet, so then you don't recover, and then you get injured, and then you take another month off, and then you repeat that process, rather than going and slow. So my number one tip, there's a long way around to saying my number one tip is going at medium intensity for long term rather than high intensity for short term. That, that's that's good because I, you know, there are moments when I'm, I need to stop. You know, I can't do it for the full 45 seconds, especially some leg stuff. I was never a leg person, so I'm sure my legs are the least. Push-ups is another story for me, but like leg stuff. Um, and they're, you know, the, the uh, reverse squats or those things, you know, I'm not making it. <laughs> and, you know, I feel bad, but I just can't. Don't feel bad. There are days where you want to push yourself and really see what you can achieve. But like I said, those other days, I think it's really important to 
listen to your body and stop, shake it off, do a few more. And those minuscule pushes of fitness is what it's all about. Because over time, that increase of volume is what's going to get you the long-term results because you've got to think about your ability to recover. Um, so my other four top tips for fitness is things that I do every day, like my my overall activity. It's called the, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So it's the all your activity that isn't in your workout. The walking, the walking around the house, the cycling, the going upstairs, the ways to stay active. That's going to increase your overall calorie burn, your activity. And that's why I go for a walk every single morning. Um, number two is mobility and stretching, having a daily routine or at least a very regular routine of stretching. And that it's much better to do 10 minutes a day than an hour and a half once a week, getting those joints opened. And what we're gonna do today in a minute is maybe a five minute stretch and a 10 minute abs, okay. and that'll work out nicely. Nice. Um, and then the next one is, is all about nutrition. Now, nutri I think we all know what's good and bad nutrition, but although we all question whether a diet is good and is that or this, which one's best, we all pretty much know what's junk food and what's good food. And I think the 80-20 rule is very similar to the training 80-20 rule that I just spoke about before. It's not about restricting yourself from the crap all the time. It's about eating it in moderation. Uh, and even when you have a cheat night or a bad day, Keep up with your normal habits of loads of water, staying hydrated, filling your body full of all the nutrients and vitamins from healthy vegetables and real whole food. Before I, what, what's your um, your vice? Your guilty eating? Do you have? Uh, yeah. I'm like, sweet, like, sweet yeah. over savory. You like Oreos? I love cookies, Nutella, donuts. Man, I'm the cookie monster at heart, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> sorry i interrupted your your tips there <laughs> but yeah i was curious because i that's okay that's um it's people's top question <laughs> sometimes <laughs> because they because they want to know if a physique and abs and a good body is attainable with a lifestyle like that and it certainly is um and some of it comes down to actually having an idea and tracking your nutrition a lot of people think, oh, it's so tedious to count your calories or things like that. But if you're seeing results through um, just making adjustments to your diet and exercise, then great. If you hit a plateau, sometimes you've got to look a little bit deeper into it. Sometimes you've got to look into, OK, I've got to look at my overall calorie consumption and my expenditure and see why I'm struggling to lose weight or why I'm struggling to gain weight or why I can't build muscle. All of these things are important. And it's really important to sometimes count and track your calories. And when you do that, you can save 20% of your food for cookies and donuts and get away with it. And when you have that understanding, you're able to cheat the system. It's called a, if it fits your macros approach. And it shouldn't be all of your diet. But if you understand how to manipulate your nutrition, it's a great way to live. That's great. And we should say they, they get a nutrition plan when they purchase either home fit or gym fit, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Every crock fit plan comes with a nutritional guide with recipes and then a little bit more in depth as to what I said about tracking your calories with an app called MyFitnessPal and a link to how to cal calculate um, an estimate of how many calories you might want to start tracking with. But on top of that, more importantly, is the one-to-one -one support with me and asking me any time about nutrition and i kind of guide people in the right direction so i have some clients who um never ask and i have some clients who message weekly and say this is how many calories that i'm i'm on and doing would you suggest any changes and the whole journey is different for different people depending on their goals yeah i've never done the fitness part of it i mean for the most part um until we get into that sweet category I eat relatively healthy, you know, especially Monday through Friday, Friday night through Sunday, not so much. <laughs> That's the fun time. <laughs> it is the fun time. Were, were there additional tips you were going? They on, were, on my, the, I think I think we said okay. top five. They, they may have been a long-winded approach, but there were five there. 
And and is it necessary? I mean, like I said, I, I haven't necessarily followed. I mean, do you, do you recommend to people who are using your plans to follow them? Or it's just an added if they're looking for that part of it? In regards to nutrition or the, yeah. the tips? You, you are, regards- your nutrition plans, is yeah. it... it are, do you recommend that they incorporate that or is it just if they're looking for that as well? It's mainly a guide. It all depends on the type of person that comes and downloads the app and gets their plan, um, depending on whether they're looking to build muscle and bulk up or lose weight. And people come in with with ideas that they have already that I want to do this diet or I have found this approach useful in the past. So I know that with the with the guide that I've created, I really do push people to at least read it, understand the fundamentals that I've created, um, and then use that as a base to then build upon. Gotcha. Um, so let's talk about, because I, I had received this email from you ages ago, hadn't shared it with my husband, but I, I walked by his shopping list and, and noticed it is now at the top of the list, coconut oil. Tell us what the hype is about coconut oil? Well, it certainly has been up and down in hype over the years. Um, For me, it's a few things. And since writing it, maybe my opinion has kind of changed and weaved over time. Um, First of all, when cooking, because in the guide I say mostly with the coconut oil for cooking, because there's some oils like olive oil, which is great for you. But olive oil would most probably best when not cooking and having it at room temperature because every oil has a different um, burning point that becomes toxic. So if you roast or cook olive oil at very, very high temperatures, then it, it could become toxic. Whereas coconut oil has a very high burning rate, which means that you can use it for lots of cooking. But olive oil I use for lots of salads, lots of um, room temperature um, dishes and things like that. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and then let's go to the five things you do every day. You had sent that around a long time ago, and I've incorporated that into our lifestyle as well. We, yeah. You know, I mean, two of them are e- are the easiest things, but the other three are things you had to, or I think it's the other three. Yeah, the other three are, are more um, you have to pay attention to and make sure you do. So I'll let you yep. talk about them. Well, my top five things I do every day, maybe they've changed. You'll have to remind me in case oh, okay, I get, I will. In case, in case I get yeah. anything wrong. But for, <laughs> okay. for, for me, is I, I wake up and walk. Or if I don't wake up and walk, then I definitely get my walk done at some stage in the day. Um, move, the mo- yeah. Yeah, move, move was one of them. Good. I nailed my own test. <laughs> um, greens, having whether it's greens powder or lots of green vegetables in your meals as much as you can. Um, And then also when it comes to food is things like um, spices and making making foods interesting, but not not only interesting, but the spices can have great um, health benefits as well as fat loss benefits as well. Um, And the foods that you eat coming from whole food. um, I don't know if that was on the list. Um, um, What else do I do every single day? Um, Green tea was one of them. The green tea. So, so yeah, I do, the, I do the green powder and I do uh, green tea. I don't do green tea every day as much, but the green powder I do. Yes, greens powder in the shake. And when it comes to teas, yes, green teas, but also matcha green teas and of those kind of varieties because it such incredible health benefits. But also if you're on a fat loss or weight loss diet or just trying to stay healthy, then it's a great way to curb some hunger between meals as well and have caffeine as well if you're having caffeine earlier on in the day up until early afternoon um it's a great way to curb hunger but also potentially um help aid fat loss as well if you take it pre-workout when you say caffeine coffee or uh, a diet soda or well mostly from black coffee and the green teas and the matcha green teas etc yeah 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 Yeah, not soda um and daylight was the other uh, the, the yes. So, so it was green drink, green tea, spices, move, and daylight. Absolutely. And the daylight hits with the um, the first one that I said going out for a walk, but the, obviously with the list it says move. But when you're going out in nature or daylight, 
the the vitamin D. It's mainly the vitamin D, but not just the vitamin D, but the the mental health benefits as well as the physical health benefits are so huge. And I think um, it's like 42% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. And vitamin D is not just a vitamin. It, it plays such a vital role. It almost works like um, actual hormone because it interrelates with so many of the body's functions um, it, in the mind and body. So it's so important to not just supplement with vitamin D, but get out there and get your skin in the daylight because it makes an incredible benefit. That's great. And so you, you've spoken a lot about it um, through the show. Social media, how has that changed your brand? Well, well it's grow it. <laughs> Yeah, it's created the brand completely. Um, I've well, it, it's it's everything. I think I've always been um, reasonably skillful at understanding the trends and where the attention is over the past five, six years since becoming a personal trainer to creating the online brand. Um, and I knew early on that building the community in CrocFit was what's going to help me continue to build the business, the brand, and and everything that's happening. Um, Instagram was the main focus for many years, but for about a year or two years, I've, I've really enjoyed YouTube because it gives me an ability to um, create a bit more um, longer, valuable, in-depth kind of content, which I've really enjoyed. Um, but like I said, my passion from being a personal trainer to wanting more was to reach more people. And social media was the the ultimate answer to doing that and it's difficult because it's not easy just to decide one day that you want to reach lots of people and make it happen it's hard to build a following and hard to build a brand but over years of consistency of posting every single day um, looking back um, I'm so glad that I started it, it's so funny both of our names work so well with our you know the locker yes. room and and crockpit yeah. They, yeah. they work well. Um, the other thing on social media and on Instagram that you do is you post a lot of your own workouts for people that they can follow at home. But now through, I think, was it um, just during this uh, pandemic that you started doing the weekly Wednesday workouts or had you always done that? At the beginning of lockdown, I did quite a lot of live workouts and was up to like two or three a week and doing them and trying to build a schedule that lasted for a few weeks. But now coming out of lockdown, um, I've built a schedule of just once a week Wednesday um, so that people can enjoy that live interaction. 6 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. in the US. That's correct. Yeah. So join me on my channel, normally Instagram, um, 1, 1 p.m. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is that US? Where where are you in the US? I'm in uh, New, New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. So check that out, 6 p.m. UK time and Instagram live for a little workout. And you were talking when you and I spoke the other day, you, you, you were telling me that people say you look like Jake Gyllenhaal and Bradley Cooper, which is very funny, two, two US actors. And I... Growing up, not not so much now. I, I used to get all the time. You're uh, the late great George Michael from your <laughs> neck of the woods. <laughs> from your yeah. neck of the woods, um, y you have started taking acting lessons as well. I have indeed. This whole time, fitness has been the focus. My brand and CrocFit and and building that following, um, but always in the back of my mind for the past few years. Whilst people have told me. I look like those people have always said you should try it as well. And it's in my blood. It's in my background. I spent time on the stage when I was younger. My family are in amateur dramatics. They've been on stage and shows and things like that. And there is there is something inside of me that wants to investigate that direction. And I've, I love helping people get fit, but I also love entertaining people. And I think that will scratch that itch and it does excite me. So I'm taking lessons, have done for a while, and I'm working my way into getting some small jobs and see where it takes me. Where do you take lessons? Is it a, a acting school or? Currently with a one-to-one -one tutor. Um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, not that regularly. I have done some um, group classes as well. Obviously before lockdown, it was physical, but I've had a few Skype ones recently. 
Do you know what your preference would be? Film, theater, television? I think m mainly for TV and film because, because I have this experience and enjoyment that I create my own videos, I think I would prefer to continue to be a screen actor. Great. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. This, this business certainly took off the CrossFit business. So should we get started? Yes, let's do it. Are you ready? I am ready. And it's not raining, even though I set up a whole tent and all outside, cause, but I am ready. Okay, cool. All right, everybody, if you're joining us, yeah. find some space on the floor. You don't need anything apart from yourself. And like I said, we're just going to start with some stretching. And then we're going to go into 10 minute abs. Oh, so as it's morning for you, I think it's really important to, to start with a morning stretch anyway. So everybody come down onto your hands and knees. From here, you mentioned your wrist. So let's start first of all with just turning your fingers towards you for forearms stretching out here and just rocking forwards and backwards, left and right circles, feeling that stretch in the forearms. And then try one arm at a time with your the back of your hand down on the floor and just feeling that stretch as well and switch hands. Yeah, my contacts were a problem. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down with me. That's fine. We can, can still see yeah, we can still so see can you. See. That's good. Yeah, good. From here, reach your arms forward and sit backwards onto your heels. From here, reach your fingers forwards. Just keep that stretch all the way down the back, shifting your hips left and right with your breath. And what's really important in stretching is to focus on your breath and to slow it down. Because when you have nice, slow, deep breaths, you're giving the body the signal to relax and let the let your body get the results from the stretching okay from here back up to all fours tuck the toes under and lift yourself up into what you would call a downward dog and from here just walk the heels one at a time feeling the stretch down the calves and hamstrings back of the legs whilst lifting your hips up high pushing away from your hands from here, step your left foot up outside your left hand. Drop, drop the back knee. So bring your foot outside your left hand, not inside of it. So outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Shift it over. From here, drop the back knee onto the floor so you can relax that back leg. Your hands are just on the floor. And we're just going to stay here. We're rocking side to side, feeling that stretch. The thing... What's great? I with, feel that stretch. That's a great uh, stretch. It's one of the best ones that you should do every single day. And what you should do with stretching, my biggest tip is to to follow what feels good for you because our bodies are all so different. It's really important to feel the restriction. Don't force anything, but follow what feels good because we all have our own different limitations here. From I here, will say that, I will say that the uh, home fit plan always starts with a warm up. Yes, warm up, getting the body prepared and ready to train. Okay, from here, keep the same angle in the legs, but just come up and lean your arms on that front leg, both arms, because we wanna get that slight rotation stretch. We're opening up the hip flexors on that right leg. Now, right arm, reach the right arm up above the head, and you should feel that hip flexor stretch at the front. Breathe into it, a few breaths. And then sit back onto your, um, bring, bring your hands outside of that front leg again, and then sit backwards, keeping that front leg forwards. You see that? So you come onto yeah. the heel. Oh, that's and, good. And we're working on that hamstring stretch. Your, your front leg doesn't need to be locked out. You just need to feel that hamstring and groin stretch wherever your restriction is. Breathe into it. Move however feels good. And then walk your hands back in between that leg. Tuck the back toe under. 
and lift up into that downward dog again. Let's repeat those few movements with stepping the right foot up outside your right hand. Drop that back knee down to the floor. You need to do your stretches every day, guys. <laughs> every day. Especially you, Alan. I do. <laughs> So you should feel that nice stretch. It's a really good one for the hip flexors and the groin, hamstrings, glutes. So this is great for your hip, uh, your your hip health. So if you've had hip replacements, I would assume this is great to just open up and release that area. From here, lift your hands up, rest on that front knee again. <sighs> Sitting up tall before you then lift the left arm up high. Reach up and stretch. And you should feel you, your body heating up as well. It is hard. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now bring both hands outside of that front leg. Sit back and lengthen that front leg. Or try to. My hamstrings are very bad. <laughs> feel that stretch. Let's do two more stretches before we move into burning out the six pack abs walk the hands back to the top in between the legs tuck the back toe under and step back into downward dog from here left leg up and under the body into this pigeon stretch can you see that just about yeah. where your front leg is okay is bent like and, that i think yep and then you bring you see this foot here bring that foot up as high as feels comfortable so then you get the stretch down the hip and the glutes here that's the one and just <laughs> from, from here <laughs> be really gentle and just drop side to side feel the stretch don't know if you've got some some yogis following us they're gonna be oh come on guys what's this about <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that flexibility i am not like, a yogi <laughs> <laughs> okay hands down step back and switch leg other leg underneath same thing here and this is also good because this helps release the lower back so if anybody gets lower back pain and stiffness the stretches that we're doing here to help release the hips are gonna have a lovely indirect release into the lower back as well. Okay, right from there, we can relax. Okay, so grab some water and some space. I'll just set my timer from the CrocFit app, of course. We are going to- And I'm gonna put you full screen so I can see you and everyone else can pay attention to you. They don't need to see me. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> if I can, I might not be able to do that, but all right, I'm ready. Okay, exercise one, we're gonna start working into the, into, the, into the abs. First one is gonna be a simple knees up crunch, which is gonna be on our backs, legs up, hands at head, elbows touching the knees, okay? Get ready in three, two, one, let's go. On your back, hands, head, crunch up nice and slow. We're gonna be working with time. So we're gonna be working with 30 seconds, so you don't need to count your reps and you don't need to rush them. Just drive the elbows up, breathe out and use the stomach. What we're gonna go for is 30 seconds work on three exercises, then a 30 seconds rest. Okay, bring your hands onto the floor, legs where they were, and just drop one leg at a time down onto the floor. Make sure your lower back stays into the ground. And if you wanna make this harder, do this with straight legs. If you wanna make it easier, do this with bent legs. So. Increase the intensity with a long leg. Okay, last 30 seconds in a bicycle. Hands ahead again, elbow to opposite knee, 
cycle the legs and elbow to other leg. And keep cycling for 30 seconds. Don't drop the shoulders down. Keep your chest up. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, rest there. 30 seconds before we start a section of three more exercises. And then we'll go back through all the way through from the top again. So get ready in 20 seconds. We start again. And this time we're going to go for a plank. Plank and a side plank variety. So let's start in a front plank position. In 10 seconds, we're going to come onto our forearms and toes. Three, two, one, up into a plank. Let's do hip drops. It looks like this. One hip down, back to the middle. Other hip down, and just keep on moving. Core strong. I've never Drop done this. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, be I believe this one will be in home fit three or home fit four. When you reach home fit three or four, you'll do it. <laughs> and that you definitely feel. Yeah. Two, one, come into a side plank position, reach the arm up. From here, let's reach the top arm through under the body and reach up. Go nice and slow, slow it down, keep control, and hips up the whole time. Don't let the hips drop. Three, two, one, same on the other side, straight in, 30 seconds. Hips up, arms up, reach through, and up. Keep going, halfway, hips up high, rotation, and reach. Five seconds, two, one, and rest. Rest there, well done. Okay, let's go back to the top, and we'll start working through with slight varieties. So. Let's start with that knees up crunch. But this time, if you can, as you go back down to the floor, the legs extend a little bit and then up. Extend as you go down and then up. Get ready. We haven't started yet. Three, two, one, let's go. Elbows to knees, extend and crunch. Squeeze those abs in the middle. This second round is going to be full of abs burning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two, one, and now straight into a leg raise. Arms down, legs up. Instead of one leg at a time, we're going both legs down to the ground and up. See if you can get your heels to touch the ground. However, only if your back stays into the floor. If your lower back starts to curve, then you've gone too far. Really important to keep that strong spine. Two, one, and into bicycles, 30 seconds. Let's go. Now it's burning. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Ooh. 30 seconds, rest off those abs. Let's turn it around. Let's go for the next circuit, starting in the plank. And this time I'll show you the next exercise the plank saw. So this time, when you set up your plank position, 
just walk your toes away a little bit and walk your arms up a little bit, just like an inch each. And then we're gonna rock forwards and backwards. Get ready, three, two, one. Here we go, toes away, arms away, rock forwards, rock back, the saw. But without your bum coming up, Alan, your bum stays in line with the body the whole time. So you're just pushing your heels forwards and backwards. Stomach in, stomach in, core engaged. Three, two, one. This time, let's come up into a high plank position. So on your hands this time. And let's do alternate side planks. Open it up, side plank, strong shoulders and rotation, arms down and twist. Keep going, three, two, one. Final 30 seconds, let's hold a hollow hold. Lay on your back, leg straight, arm straight, hold it here. Chest Are your off arms the floor. Up? Yeah. Okay. Arms up and chest off the floor. Push your lower back into the floor. Hold it. Hold it. Twelve seconds. Five. Hold it. Two. One. And rest. Oh. Okay. Today was supposed to be abs anyway in, in CrossFit. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. From here, just drop your hips down, chest up, and stretch off those abs. Okay, excellent. That's the workout done. So five minute mobility, 10 minute abs. And that is what, just a, a little preview, a little tester into crunk fit. And let me just show you that we were we were using the crunk fit app there. And let me just remind you that the Crocs app is completely free. Um, you can download it and use it for free. There's timers in there and other useful stuff that you can use anytime. That was a really tough abs workout. And you actually, <laughs> you have a abs workout online as well, don't you? Many, many YouTube yeah. abs workouts that you can just yeah. search. Go to my YouTube channel. There's lots of follow along workouts just like that one. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Alex. This has been amazing. I hope well, everyone learned something today. And I hope you follow Alex on Instagram and Facebook and check out the Home Fit or Gym Fit, whichever works best. I mean, Gym Fit, probably not for a while for a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, they haven't Thank opened so up. Much. Have they uh, opened no. up for you? Yeah. No, oh, no. I yet. saw you post something. Yeah. Yeah. Not for us either. Um, no. I don't know. And I, I don't think I'd be comfortable anyway, just yet. <laughs> Personally. That's the, the same opinions with a lot of people. But d let, let that be a time for lots of you to keep working on your fitness at home. There's so much to do with your body weight, with being active anyway, anyhow. You are not. Um, it doesn't have to be the gym. The gym is great, but you've got many other options. Absolutely. And I've grown to love actually doing it right out here in my backyard. If you have space in your backyard. I also do it in my basement when it, you know, when it was still March and April here. Um, it was pretty great. Well, Alex, you enjoy your, the rest of your Saturday afternoon. I'm going to have a protein shake now. It's still Good. only, it's just 10 a.m. here. So I really appreciate you uh, doing this today and I hope uh, everybody learned something and I hope you check out Alex's stuff online. Amazing. Thank you for having me in the locker room. Really appreciate it and keep doing with everything that you're doing. And, and thanks for everyone watching. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a great Saturday. Bye. You can stay there, Alex. I'll